Good afternoon, everybody. We're just getting settled in in person here. You're gonna have to be Welcome to your Monday, March 18th meeting. No, we didn't have any holidays, nothing fun to report. St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day, yes. yes. The one holiday that all real estate agents advertise. You gotta get your St. Patty's Day email from your realtor. <laughs> Just like your spring forward. Did you guys send St. Patty's, St. Patty's Day? Day emails? No. Nice. Love that. Did everybody celebrate St. Patty's Day? Rochelle did. That's good. She's still here though. <laughs> I had a green tea this morning. You had a green tea. Ooh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I see lots of green though. It's true. I'm even. A you say has got green. Who's beside you? Oh, Susan. Yeah, Susan you guys are all green. Steve. You got some green there. You're yeah, good. Looks good. <laughs> How was the week? What was the energy like? Tell us what was happening. Boring. Boring? Who's wow. boring? Wow. Your husband. Oh, I was being said that. <laughs> Boring, as in like no showings, no offers, just like nothing happening, or what? Well, I think it was fun. Is that because of March break? I don't or think March affected it. Ramadan, Ramadan. Or, I mean, is yes. anyone celebrating Ramadan? Yeah, yeah. Susan's here. Yeah, okay, Queen's good here. girl. Yes, just fasting though, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're right in the middle of midday fast. How is your day? I'm Celine, have open houses? Yeah. Did anyone do open houses? Celine had an open house this weekend. Okay. How was it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm an asshole. I had an open house. 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 I had Okay. Yeah, the open house was crazy. I had 18 people come to the Nice. And Michael, they just come here on Sunday and we had a big 15 group come to Good. Good. Did any, yeah. did you get any offers? Um, agents are going to set they're going to bring offers to stay. You may want to set a date if you start to get a lot of calls. Just well, say we're doing it tonight at. Naturally, seven. it's going to happen. Your well, first offer is going to become your offer date. I, I, yeah. Well, my thought behind that was that a lot of buyers are shying away from the market yeah. again, and it's a stress and a pressure. But I have been getting calls, so I have sent out an email letting agents know that I will meet you today at six, and I've had about five, six agents already. Because we suspected we would get, because we had even 20 showings booked in the morning. Nice. Okay. And then even um, Friday, I did some door knocking, drop off some of the flyers. Open house, come welcome the neighbors. Two neighbors actually came, and one neighbor came through and he said that he was so happy for it because he's thinking of selling. And if I could come in and talk to them, there you go, and his wife and they're gonna sell. So at least that's a good idea, right? So I'm yeah. getting with them on Thursday. Perfect. There's talk to them about selling. Okay, so just for those online, that was an open house on in Ajax, and she had. Twenty to groups one day, right? fifteen groups the other the next day. Do people come with their agents? Or are they coming alone? Only two people came with agents. Okay. Only two. You're gonna. Michael? Did you scare him? Is he sleeping now? He was so busy you now. <laughs> we'll leave him in bed. <laughs> What's the list price of that property? Eight forty nine. And you're hoping for nine. So I didn't underlist too much. The buyers that didn't come with the agents, were they just uh, looking around or what are they what are they up to? There were serious buyers. At one of those buyers who came, you mean with the agents or without ones without agents? Oh, they were serious buyers. They all came from Scarborough and Mark. Did they say why they're did they, did they, did they did they say they have agents or they don't have agents? Some have agents. Some have agents. I did get contacts, I did get emails, I really follow up. Everyone here. I did tell them it's the security needs. Did any of you guys try that new app I sent you guys for the open house, Curb Hero? No? No? Try to do an open house, right? Okay. Did you do an open house this weekend? How was it? Oshawa, we had 30 people through under 900 as well. You said Sunday was better than Saturday. Sunday, we had 20 people through. Uh, Eastdale community. Yeah. Bungalow. That's where you guys were too. What's your price point? What are you hoping for? 
That's okay. You can do it. Anyone else? Anyone online? There was a lot of open houses. I saw this. I know. Weekend, but... Nelson was telling me about another agent who did an open house on uh, Michael's online on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So they did it on a Friday. Oh, on I saw a that. Friday they yeah. had uh, how many? Area. they had sixteen people through on the Friday yeah, that was, evening. That was Port now, Union area. Now Friday was a was a uh, last week was a, a lot of people off, right? So maybe that's why they got sixteen March people. Break. I wonder if they like March break was last week. I wonder if they had it this Friday whether they get sixteen people mm -hmm. or not. It's true. But anyways, just 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 to show everybody here, it's just it's just not Monday. It's just on Saturday, Sunday. You do Fridays too, right? Or maybe you in the Wednesday. Thursday. Whatever. Yeah. And the purpose of the open houses just uh, just remember everybody here. The purpose of open houses is to find those people that Celine find found that are showing up without ages that don't have ages. Those are the people that you want, right? Do that listing. Yeah, I think I had a lot yeah. too. Same. Interesting. Yeah, probably the same. Yeah, it's probably a little tour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's okay though. Interesting. When's their offer Nate? Who's listing? Who's listing? Carl's not here, right? Cool. That's good. So does that show kind of what people are feeling? All right. So what do you guys tell me? So was the market again? last week last week's tough. We got Ramadan coming on. We got to the people off of school. So maybe it was a little bit slower than what you normally find. But what, what did you guys think? Did you find it was slower is picking up or what did you guys think? Sounds like it was boring. I'm, I'm <laughs> picking up a little bit and anybody else? No? So Nelson's telling me here that on the weekend we had uh, what over three hundred appointments. Yeah. So we haven't had over three hundred appointments now for some time. So that's good. So I'm not sure whether it's because we have more inventory or or people are are actually out there doing things. So it's interesting. I've got some other stats here too. I'm just going to go off the top of my head for a couple of things. One thing one thing we're finding right now, and and I've got Varan here too doing the mortgages. Varan, you're getting lots of people uh, making more people than nor normally look for pre pre. Approvals and things. Last week kind of slow. I mean, I was out of Last week was slow too for you. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's made it a little tough there, but I'm I'm reading stuff that the buyers themselves are yeah. finally settled into the interest rates. I mean, I've heard a lot of people come to me saying when the interest rates come down, when the interest rates coming down, but we're told that even if they did come down, it may not be till who knows, like the second quarter, maybe third quarter. But if they did go down, it's, it's only a quarter point, and, and and I don't expect any more than a quarter point. Can't see them doing any, any more than that, and, and unfortunately, in the states, they uh, they actually are talking about increasing their rates because their economy is not doing as well as they thought. So, so if anybody's waiting for the interest rates to drop, they did drop. It's going to be a quarter point, but from what I'm reading, that the buyers themselves are settled into the rates. They're they're comfortable with the rates. They're, they're, that's the way it's going to be, and now they're going to adjust it accordingly. Second thing is that they're out there looking for properties, and this time around spring they're not competing with investors so during the peak in 21 22 one in four being sold to investors so the first time buyers competing with investors who plan on just they're going to win regardless those investors have disappeared they're gone so now the buyers again have a better chance to get property because they're not competing with those investors so if you've got buyers that are on the fence waiting don't wait anymore Right, so, so 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 it's time. It's it's you know we're in the market right now. This is this is my opinion, right? As far as the stats go for uh, March the seventeenth, as of last night, we've got fourteen thousand four hundred forty-two active listings. So that's gone that's gone quite a bit from uh, fourteen thousand last uh, last uh, week. So it's gone up about six hundred per week in the last couple of weeks. Active listings. So that's encouraging, right? Uh, I confused everybody last week talking about non-owner non occupied places. This time I'm going to talk about owner occupied places. So <laughs> we've got 14,442 active listings right now. Of that 6,900, less than half, just slightly less than half are owner occupied. All the rest are not owner occupied. So tenanted or vacant, basically. We don't right. they're, either, they're either tenanted or, or vacant. Or parking lot. So people are saying. <laughs> and on the condominiums, we have 7,200 active listings right now, of which 7,500 are owner-occupied. On the freehold side, there's 7,200, and there's 4,300 are owner-occupied. So more than 50% of freeholds are owner-occupied, but less than 30% of condos are owner-occupied, which makes sense because everybody's buying condos to invest, right? It all makes sense, right? Sales right now for the first 17 days, sales for, the, uh, for uh, Trevor down 3%. 
which is better than down 11%, which we were last week. So that, that's good news. Uh, freeholds are down, or sorry, freeholds are up uh, 1% and condos are down 9%. So again, condominium market is struggling a little bit. Anybody have condos are trying to sell right now? Are you having a bit of a hard time selling it? Is it because of, is it? Is it your price, seller's price? The, the list price, is it your price or the seller's price? In between? Three showings. Is that the big one? Yeah. Is that the big unit? Uh, it's, a, it's not that big. How many, how, what's your price on yours? 1.35 million, that's a big one. So how many square feet? Really? 700 square feet for 1.3 million? Yeah, so the comparables were going for about 1.4 in the hot market for her clients. Where, got, got where, what what building is that? It's downtown. It's Because that's about, what, $1,300 square foot? That's, that's, that's... It's, it's CO1, so... Yeah. Anyways, okay, good. Uh, of those sales, by the way, even though they're minus 3%, uh, 455 of the 1300s uh, for condos are actually sold for over asking. Um, of, of, of all the listings, 1,800 sold for over asking. So uh, of the 3,500 that uh, that have sold, 1,800 went for over asking. And on the freeholds of the 2,100, 1,250 were over asking. So, uh, so I'm thinking about freeholds, about 50% went for over asking. Overall, a little more than 50%. Condominiums, less than 50%. So same thing. So it seems like freeholds are doing better than condos right now. Mm -hmm. On the on the lease side, there's fourteen thousand active leases, fifty two hundred freeholds, uh, eighty nine hundred are are condos, and they're up about three percent overall. Uh, condom, condominium leases are up seven percent, even though the, the units are down, and freeholds are leases are down nineteen percent. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any issues trying to lease a freehold house? We were just talking about condos. So, so, so the, so the freehold houses, they're actually down 19%. So you got to maybe look at the prices on that. Just like keep returns. <laughs> yeah. And them's the stats. Uh, what will Toronto spring market housing look like? Experts say the first time buyers are back and prices could jump 6% this year. Woo! So Mr. Buyer, you're waiting for the, for the interest rates to drop. That, that may help you, but unfortunately, the price is going to increase. Whatever your savings you're going to have on the rates are going to be sucked up by the increase in prices. So you better buy now than, than later. Yes. Yes. Right? When's, when's the best time to buy? Now. No. Yes. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> yeah. You got more stuff. Okay. okay, so let's get something out of the way quick because I don't want to talk a lot about it. That's the lawsuit that just happened in the U.S. So we started getting messages about that. In WhatsApp, I think Chris Leader probably went over Talked it a lot about it today. So. Um, the biggest myth, and we heard it in WhatsApp today, is buyer's commissions are gone. They're, they're not allowed to pay buyer commissions anymore. So there's no more buyer agents. They don't get commission. That's it. That's, this that's is only U.S. U.S. Buyer. Everyone's, Mr. Julian's face just looked at this me. Is, this, is, <laughs> <laughs> this is all U.S., but we know that anything that happens in the U.S. tends to trickle into Canada at some point, right? So right now, this is not affecting any of you, but it's just good to know what's happening in the world. Claire probably has a really good way of explaining it, but but that's not true. That buyers cannot get paid commission. That so so get that out of your brain. Just aren't forced to yeah have to pay. I've it. seen headlines: six percent is gone, doomsday, no more buyers agents. Like the headlines are going crazy. They're really not helping themselves in the U.S. So Claire, do you want to clarify what actually happened? Right, with so, so there's two lawsuits. Okay, so the American one and the Canadian one. There's a Canadian copycat. We're in the middle of it as well. So we're not we're not out of the woods yet. But no decisions have been made in Canada. But in Canada, we do things different than they do in the states so I, I think it's gonna be a little bit different result but what they've done they've, they've uh, sued or, or national the nar national association of realtors have, have given up what 418 million dollar lawsuit to pay for these sellers or whoever's in this lawsuit so they've settled by the way they're not pleading guilty but they have settled for over 400 million dollars and they have to pay that over four years so so 400 million i'm not sure how many realtors are in the states just let's say there's a million so it's going to be 400 dollars each each realtor to pay for that over four years. I'm not sure how they're going to do it, but anyways, that's, that's beside the point. Um, so in the States, there's no, there's no, um, every state's different, but as, as an overall comment, there's no buyer representation agreements in the States. There's no BRAs. Canada, there is. 
Uh, in USA, they've, they've done the same thing we've done. They have 6% commissions, some percent commissions, by the way, that's normal down there. And they would offer half of that, 3% to the co-op broker. And, and the whole gist of the thing saying is that the sellers are saying, hey, wait a minute, you guys are colluding because you're forcing me to pay the co-op broker. This is the gist of the case. You're forcing me to pay, therefore it's costing me more, more money. Why am I paying the buyer's agent? I should just be paying you and let the buyer's agent pay their agent. Or let the buyer pay their agent. And that's what the rule came down. So that's all it means. All it means is that the buyers are going to be paying their, their agent and the sellers are going to be paying their agent. Now, I thought years ago this was a good idea. We used to get 6% commissions, used to pay 3% co-op. And then, and then some agents started paying 2.5%. And some agents were paying 2%. Have you guys ever sold any property in Hamilton or, or there, there, the co-op commission is 2%. Why would the listing agent tell us what our commission is? That's true. You follow me? So I was I was a big proponent of getting rid of this for a long time. To me, it's a good idea. The bad part of it is that now the buyer agents in the States are going to have to negotiate their own commission with the buyer. And the buyer can pay them directly, which is going to be a hard time if they're a first-time buyer, or they can do what's called uh, seller incentive. So the seller can pay that commission. So it's going to go back to... It's going to go back to the water level, whatever 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 works out, and that's, that's going to... That's going to, that's going to Make it happen. For instance, Pravesh has a listing and I a listing appointment. And I have a listing appointment. He's going to take a listing. This is the states now. And he's going to take a listing. He's going to offer zero percent commission to the buyer side. So in that particular case, if I'm buying, if I'm buying his listing, the buyer has to pay me. But I'm competing against him. I'm going to my seller and say, look, he's offering zero percent. I suggest we offer two and a half percent. Therefore, as a, as a seller incentive. You understand? So now when the buyer comes, which properties are you going to sell? Right? It goes, goes right back to what we were talking about again. Call a different name. It's not a co-op commission. Now it's a seller incentive. A concession or... The other part is in the States, it's no different than us. You've got 5% down. If you've got to, if you've got to put 2.5% to the to the agent, you can't buy a house 2.5% down. Therefore, that buyer can't buy it. Right? So they have to do something. So... I think it's just a bunch of smoke and mirrors. I think they're just going to change the name from co-op to incentive, and then we're back to what we've always been. Yep. Won't be an MLS, so you have so, to have so to me, it's To me, it's just a lot of press, a lot of noise. At the end of the day, it's not going to be there. But it's going to be kind of fun, though, because now as a, as a buyer agent in the States, you have to convince them to pay you that 3%, not, you know, because you're going to have some other agents. Some agents could say, hey, why why, why work with them at 3% and work for me for one and a half? So now you really got so, to show so, your value. So, so, so it goes right back to what we're doing already in, in, on listing side in, in any case. Mm -hmm. So so it goes down to make sure you got a proper listing presentation. You got you know, represent yourself, make sure you know what's going on. You can you can pay for your, yourself every time. So I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. It's gonna be a lot of talk, a lot of a lot of things going on, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's gonna make a lot, a lot of difference. The question we're getting is it gonna to come to Canada? And if so, when? We're in the middle of a lawsuit right now. I, th I wouldn't be surprised to come up with the same same solution. Yeah. It'll just take a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. So at the end of the day, it just makes no difference. Yep. Still keep doing what you're doing. We still have buyers reps. We've always had them. Right? So. And then tomorrow, we're going to talk about all listings anyways, because that's what we want to try to focus on this year, right? right? So tomorrow is our Fired Up event. Can our guest speakers actually hear with you in the audience today? It's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if you're wondering. So we're going to focus on listings instead of all the buyer rep hoopla. <laughs> hoopla, hoopla. Do you want to show the agenda now for Fired Up? Do you want to see? Yeah, it? I guess while we're on the topic of Fired Up, who's coming tomorrow, by the way? Well, I hope all of you. Good. Who's not coming? Let's actually, sorry, I already, I already put you on the spot. Okay, so most of us are coming tomorrow. Um, starts at 9.45, I think. Can you guys see it behind me? Okay. So tomorrow we are going to start a little earlier than we had hoped. Um, so we're going to open the doors at 9 o'clock. Um, we'll have coffee and some food. I think Celine requested food. I'm just kidding. We already had some. Um, but we're going to have a few things happening. So we're just going to talk, like Carly said, a uh, heavy focus on listings. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But um, we're going to start off mostly on, like, your database. And Cam probably knows better, but uh work in your database how to hit six figures with that we're going to talk about how to never lose a listing again so maybe a walkthrough of like what to do when you guys go on a listing presentation um we're going to talk about closing skills and objection handling so these are all a lot of stuff that you guys have put your hands up that you guys want us to do and um we are resourcing it out to cam to kind of do all that for us so no pressure but 
Um, really good time, I think, to get into the listings habit, and we'll talk all about that tomorrow. So starting at nine, don't be late. We are going to start at 9.45 on the dot. I know it's earlier than what we usually do, um, but I think it's going to be a fun day. It's okay if you are late, just if you have kid drop-off pickups, we know that yeah. does exist. So okay. we're not going to like close and lock the doors, but <laughs> you don't want to miss anything either. <laughs> no. Yeah. So that's kind of what tomorrow's going to. We're not the most fired up people. So I apologize uh, when Carly gets up there and uh... just, come, I'm going to get Rochelle to come up with. <laughs> yeah, me. we might need some help. When I get to the part and now let's, I'll just let you say, let's get yeah. fired up. Okay. Yeah. We're a little shy up there. <laughs> so we are fired up. We're just, we're, we're, we're Claire's daughters. So we're introverted, <laughs> fired up. It's in us, but it's, it's, it's in there deep in the soul. I'll bring it. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a cam score. Please. Yeah. Um, but no, it's going to be a fun day. I'm really excited for that. Yeah. Uh, anything else? I guess while we're on the topic of events, uh, we did book awards. So we will talk about that tomorrow too. But April 22nd, the awards is. So we wanted to get Eid and everything out of the way um, so that you guys can eat and drink and have some fun. So April 22nd, put that in your calendars as well. I think it's at Parkview Manor, same place we did it last year. We did a full day event last year. We had David Greenspan come in the morning and then we did awards. But this year we're going to do two separate events. So we got tomorrow's and then we're just doing half day of awards. We don't want to wait till April to have like any events for the year. So we thought we'll split it out this year and do one really quickly in March during Ramadan, unfortunately. And then we'll do awards yeah. when that's over. Cool. Do you want me to go into? Sure. Okay. So we did a little bit of Chris Leader this morning. So for those of you guys that are new, I know I've got some of my new guys on Facebook right now. Um, I know some of you guys were here. So this is for my virtual world and anyone that didn't come this uh, at 12. Um, but today's focus was on the art of execution and really like executing the things that you guys um, are taught and we teach you guys all about. And we were just talking about how a lot of us go to these sessions, including like tomorrow, for example, you guys are going to learn a lot of stuff um, from Cam. And a lot of us go to these sessions. We learn lots of stuff. We get motivated and then we go home and do the same thing we did last week. So Today was all about how to start executing on those things that you guys actually learn. Um, the biggest thing for it is a lot of people like to, on a daily basis, go after the things that are easy, right? Like on every day, you look at your calendar. We always pick the things that are easiest to us and not the things that are a little hard, um, such as like prospecting, for example. We all know we need to do it, but it is a hard part of our schedule. And so he was giving us some tips today on how we can start executing on a lot of those small tasks that we need to be doing in our business. Uh, we talked about the four parts of the business. Um, this all comes back to systems that I train you guys on as well. But number one of the successful real estate practice includes prospecting, something you need to do every day to keep your pipeline full. And sorry, going back to it, he was talking about a lot of these things agents have problems with, but there's a solution for all of these problems. And I'm going to go over those too. But prospecting is one of them. So keeping your pipeline full, um, your administrative tasks. So all that lovely paperwork that we love doing, that is also part of our job and making sure that the actual back end of our business, um, marketing, paperwork, all that stuff is also running. Uh, at the same time, we want to make sure that our clients are taken care of. So client care, client experience, um, developing a repeat and referral business by giving such good care. These are all part of it. And then, of course, finances. So staying on top of your expenses and your taxes, which it is tax season coming up. So I'm sure we're all ready for that. Um, but yeah, in order to maintain a lot of these four things, I always talk about the five systems. Lead generation is one of my one of my five, but having systems in place for all of these things to keep yourself organized is really what's going to help you guys have that structure. He was talking about awards. So if you guys know that you have to prospect and you don't want to, sometimes having an award for yourself, whether you treat yourself to a dinner, maybe you say, hey, if I do my prospecting goals, I'll take myself on a trip. I'll take my family away, whatever it is. Sometimes just having that external reward factor is what's going to Kind of keep you motivated it's not a motivation for everyone but if you need to kind of kick yourself in the butt that might be one of them um he got really deep about how much lifetime you have left uh don't calculate claire's because he did calculate his but um going based off of um for, for those that missed it they, they said how, how old was your father when he died and how old are you and you got so many years to live so he had Claire's one, three he had so. 20 years i have three so yeah <laughs> so he did put it into place he got really dark there for a second but if that's what helps you uh calculate how much you have in your lifetime and what you want to do with that 
Um, I'm sure we don't want to be prospecting in those You're three years. But <laughs> you know, get out the here. door. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> get on a plane. <laughs> um yeah so you're just saying invest in your time wisely and start doing those uncomfortable things so that you can enjoy your life right um so just some tips on some of those things um spend an hour every week to get good at the things that we're not so again think about your prospecting how does that go how's your administrative tasks how are your finances and how are your clients and if they're getting taken care of so make sure you just kind of think of like the things that make you uncomfortable and spend some time every day so for example, prospecting, just one hour a day. <laughs> that Once you do it an hour a day, you go from uncomfortable to comfortable really quickly, right? A lot of us are scared to prospect because it's an uncomfortable feeling. It's an uncomfortable thing. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you get at it. Just like videos and all that. We talk about, people talk about me doing videos all the time. Not my. If you go back to my first video, I'll show you how uncomfortable that was. It gets comfortable, right? So door knocking, open houses, all that stuff, whatever you guys are doing with your business, it does get easier. But if you're not prospecting, maybe at least spending one day or sorry, one hour a day, uh, your client follow up, we all sometimes we fall um, back on that. And we don't do it like we did. So we said, just start small, just start by reaching out to one past client every day, and your business will skyrocket. So I even watched a webinar last week, one guy, he sends happy birthday isn't even just doing that one or just that one touch point of the year is actually more than probably what 99% of real estate agents do. So even if you have one touch point with your past clients, whatever it is, that's what's going to make a difference in your business. And organization. So again, spend one hour a day organizing your CRM, your files, your office, whatever it is. If you feel like your life is chaotic, then sometimes just organizing your desk is something that will really help you. And that was about it. So his assignment for the week was pick two to three things that you want to improve on, set a deadline and give yourself an award. And that's it. Um, oh, I have one other thing that Scott gave me. Just going back on that topic of touching base with your past clients. Um, Scott gave me, this is, can I call it your partner? What do I call her? <laughs> um, yeah. So we've got a friend here that's doing a business for you guys. Um, I don't know, are any of you guys into handwritten cards by any sort? Yeah. So she makes these really cute hand cards. I'll pass them out because they're really nice quality, but they've got things such as they say like love where you live. Home is where you are. Happy home anniversary. Um, your referrals mean a latte. Hello there. So she's got all these really cute cards. I'll pass them around. Here, Jimmy. Actually, just pass it over. So she's starting a new business too. So if you guys want to get into something where you're touch basing with them a little bit more natural, I know people are using Morris marketing and sending out those newsletters and stuff, but if you like a little bit more of a handwritten touch, she will do, she'll mail out cards twice a month. You can pick a different signature on it as well. I'm just going to read this. She will send, yeah, you might need to help me here, Scott. <laughs> she'll send a yeah. And will she hand write the card for you? You still got to do that part. Because no. she'll, or on the computer, maybe? Perfect. So, yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. So it's called Touch Base. Her name's Polly. Um, so she can do it for you. Probably typed. Probably like these signatures here. It's nine fifty a card, including postal. So it does come at a cost, of course. Um, but if you don't want to pay for a service, you can go buy some cards and do it yourself, or you can hire someone out. So just an idea for you guys if you're looking for new touch points this year, house anniversaries, birthdays, thinking of you, thank you for your referrals, lots of different options. Um yep. Yeah. Yeah, they, they feel nice too. They're really good. So just an idea for you guys. And that's all I got. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple reminders before Claire and I get into the headlines. Um, all my reminders are based on like actual things that happened to me over the weekend or the weeks. So I kind of just document. So these are not things that I think you should know, but they're things that people out there don't know. So I'm assuming if there's one, then there's there's more. Um 
multiple representation. It is still allowed under TRESA. So you can still do multiple rep. So that means one or both of you are brokerage rep in terms of your listing or buyer agreement. The only new thing as part of TRESA is you need to submit your multiple rep consent forms and both parties need to sign that before you even get to the offer stage. So a couple of times I've seen people where I'm helping them with an offer and we're going through all the paperwork. And then I realize that like the deposit's going to Percy Fulton and I'm like, is this, are we multiple rep? They're like, yeah, yeah, it's multiple rep. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, you need to identify that in the CCR, but there's two separate consent forms that need to be sent before you even get to that offer stage. So I'll continue to remind everybody about that, but you can do multiple rep. You just need to do the consent forms. Um, just a reminder, the girls are now using brokerage rep forms. So they will always default to brokerage rep. If you want designated rep forms, you just need to ask them for that. So you can still do designated rep. It's just by default, we're not sending you those documents. Yeah. Just, just, to, just to touch on that for a second there. So we had our first client phoning up to ask for a cancellation of a listing. <clears throat> Bit of a conflict, but uh, you know we don't, we don't cancel listings. They want to cancel the listing, right? Mm -hmm. And then this, this individual phone Rico, and, and she phoned us back and said, "Yes, but uh, my agent is a designated rep." And we're thinking to ourselves, "She knew that term. <laughs> someone told well, somebody told her that rep." So, so we're thinking, "So," <laughs> <laughs> because the designated rep and and our designated rep, she doesn't know this, but our designated rep, she's not talking to. But they're out of town anyways, but I didn't tell her that. Oh. So she wanted this thing canceled because it's designated rep. So we didn't know what to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was what we were trying to avoid. We've been worried about that. So I phoned, I phoned Rico and I said, okay, so this person's designated rep. This person phoned Rico and you guys told told this person that because they're designated rep, they can get out of the contract. Is that true? They said, that's not true because the agreement's with the brokerage. I said, okay, that's true. So what's designated rep for? And they didn't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I told the woman, I said, I said, we're not canceling anything. If you want us to give another agent, we can. You want to give another agent to another office, we can, but we're not canceling. So that was that was the bottom line, but there was still confusion. So this is one of the reasons why we did not want to do designated rep. That's why we're doing the broker rep for now, until unless things change, right? Yep. Cool. Um, I'm getting questions about Schedule A. You notice that Schedule A is now mandatory on not just the listing agreement, but also the buyer agreement, which is kind of awkward because like you're a buyer agent and you kind of know what your responsibilities of that are. So Schedule A, you can't leave blank. You could put an NA in it. You could put a line in it. But because it's part of your agreement, it's page six of seven or seven of seven. You can't just like delete the page. So you got to have something there. Um, Rico has come out and said some ideas you could grab from your Rico information guide. So on page number three, they talk about working with an agent. And these are ideas that you could put into a Schedule A. I'm not recommending you do so, but if you're like dying to put something there, like you don't want to leave it blank, but you don't know what to put there, there's some ideas. So as a buyer agent, you could have in your Schedule A assist with getting pre-approvals for financing so you know how much you can afford. Like to us, that's standard. Of course, you're going to introduce them to a mortgage broker, but if you want to add that to your Schedule A, you could. The risk is if you don't assist them with that, does that mean your contract's at an end? This is where it gets sort That's of great for us. That's why as a brokerage, we believe less is more. But like I said, if you want to put something in there, these are ideas, um, make you aware of any tax exemptions, gather and share information about neighborhoods and homes that meet your requirements. Like obviously you're going to do this as a buyer's agent. But maybe don't put it in writing in case you didn't. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, we're saying you can't, you leave, can't it leave it blank. You, you can, have to write NA, you can put or, NA or put a line through it. Of course you're doing it blank, aren't you? Yeah, that's okay. We, this is a new thing <laughs> as of two weeks ago, right? We're just getting used to it. It yeah. just, it just can't be a blank page. It's got to have something in it. So put a sentence, um, for listings, the easiest one is photography. Most people are providing photography services. So you could put that in a listing agreement. You could put whatever, every single service. But like I said, less is more. Like if you put an open house in there and you get sick and you can't do that open house, is that is that a gray area? You know, is your contract at an end? So I get a lot of questions yeah. about that. Julian's got a question. Yeah. Yeah, our standard is NA with the line through it. <laughs> right? I have been doing that. <laughs> I've got Sorry. a lot of questions. Yeah, I know we're yeah. being recorded. We're a little bit of an anomaly. If you ask your peers, it's kind of not what other brokerages, other brokerages have like full that's on <laughs> schedules where you choose what you want. I just think that's going to open your contract up to a whole bunch of like gray areas. So I think put an NA or a line, but like I said, if you're dying to put something and you want to have it complete, just put something very basic. I'm going to show you properties that meet your needs, you know, like stuff like that. Photography. for This would things. be a good spot to put um, if you guys are doing staging 
right? Mm -hmm. And you want yeah. the seller to maybe um, reimburse you and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of people ask us about you have to put that So yeah. this is a good spot to put that if you guys are not paying for staging or however you guys are doing it. Yeah. Um, cause they didn't have that before. Right? And, you, and you need to have that in writing, especially if there is cost involved or you've negotiated for them to prepay it, which would be the ideal. They prepay the staging, you reimburse them at closing. That would be like your most ideal type of scenario. So yeah. Could There's we have a brokerage clause saying if you decide to cancel that XXX? No, no we could. Okay. Um, so I, some agents out there, they're saying that, uh, free staging, free painting, free lore, free moving free real estate uh, and, 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 uh, and the cheapest rate in town. So, so that individual is going to have to, on their schedule, A, they're going to have to state, you know, I'm paying for staging, paying for painting. I'm paying, that has to be in writing. Anything that you've promised that costs money, either the, either the seller is going to pay for, or you're going to pay for, it has to be in that schedule. A. So if you're going to do staging, but they're going to pay you back, if it doesn't sell, put that in schedule A. I wouldn't do that anyways, but so, or, 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 or no, or, or let them pay for it. So agrees to pay for staging and I agree to reimburse if the property closes. Right. That, that's the type of thing you're going to put in. That's true. Some people have asked me, what's your, what's your, uh, aren't you going to put your termination clause in the schedule? A? Yeah. We don't have a termination clause. We don't terminate. We don't terminate. <laughs> sure. We transfer. <laughs> Yeah. So the other thing I've noticed, um, Claire and Nelson and I are going through some legal cases. We've got like a whole bunch of variety of stuff coming up because we've got Treb, Small Claims Court, Rico. We have a little bit of everything. So the so one. It's, it's only three. I mean, that's still, it's, I mean. <laughs> Claire's like, this is nothing. It's, not, it's nothing. It's a whole bunch. So like we're new, okay? I, we're new well, here. Well, I, listed, I, listed, I listed three. I didn't list more than that. My point is what I have noticed. We're uh, dramatic. Okay? Yeah, no, but what I've noticed as a common thing is that yeah. When the documentation is done right, that really sets the tone for how that case is going to go. Because that's kind of one of the first things they look for is send me everything. Send us a trade, all your listing documents, your buyer rep, send me all the documents. And if those are all done properly and complete, it already sets the tone for how the next stages are going to proceed. Because as soon as you have a gap or something missing in those documents, it will be used against you. So my point is to like, I know we're talking about Tressa and all this stuff, but there is some value to having your documents done, having your fin track and having all your documents from A to Z, all the checklists from your spy. So having that stuff done really does protect you if something happens in the future. Cause in our cases coming up, we do have proper documentation for everything. And I'm pretty sure we're going to win almost mm -hmm. all these cases, just not because of those documents, but it's just made the agent look professional and, you know, they're kind of setting the tone for how that's going to go. So just, that was my point on that. Not that we're working on a lot, a lot of cases and everyone's getting in trouble, but that it helps you a lot when your documents are done accurately. So even your BRA, not just leaving that geographic location blank, like put locations yeah. in there. As soon as that's blank, that document is not a complete document anymore. I would say go in with your paperwork and pretend Rico, you're in Rico court every time. Like <laughs> just assume that Rico is going to see it one day and fill it out accordingly. It's true. I'm just going to try to pull up one video. While well, you're doing that, we yeah. have fun things too, right? So when we're doing arbitration, I have, have an agent that helps us too. Bill, Bill George helps us do a lot of stuff. He's pretty, he's pretty sweet, smart, right? So we'll do things like uh, if someone's after us for arbitration, we'll, we'll say to them, did you check the BRA for that buyer? We're saying to the other agent, are they coming after us? Did you did you check the BRS for that buyer? Did you go to the BRS system and see if that buyer is registered? No. I, I already know the answer because I know you guys don't never do it, right? <laughs> and they, they say no and say, see, so if you had done that, you would have seen that buyer, right? So just bang, one, one thing stop. And then sometimes they'll sometimes they'll turn on Bill and say, Oh no, we didn't. Did you guys? And says, No, I didn't either. But I, that's <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> But if you did BRS, that, that'd be it. who does BRS? Nobody. I don't know if I, I anyone knows to. what it is. I know we do. I know we all do BRAs, but BRAs is, is your buyer's registry agreement, and the BRS is where you registered on truck. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'll do some. Oh, you're gonna show this. This is fun. We'll do some power hour headlines now. Claire and I will take turns. Mostly Claire will just correct me if I didn't story tell the right way, right? <laughs> So this one is uh, I love blog to you with headlines, but people are losing it over how losing it over this video showing how unlivable Toronto's condos have become. So this condo is 159 Southwest Condos at 159 Wellesley. I don't have any sound on it. I'll just play it as it is. But people are going crazy. This is a two bedroom unit. Um, they're calling it horrific. Like the article's just like so mad about this layout. I mean, 
it doesn't oh it's small okay but this is not the worst condo i've ever seen yeah. That's like one it, it's got a balcony there's screens flying away there but <laughs> I think that's what people are going crazy about. It's just buffering. Any, anyway. Yeah, it's not buffering very well here. So yeah, this one is less than 500 square feet. Two bedrooms and a bathroom. Wow. But I don't know. There's a closet in it? There isn't yeah, one no and not closet. the other. Yeah. So it's a it's a uh, it's a five hundred and fifty square foot two bedroom condo downtown. That living room. The, one of, one of the bedrooms does not have a closet, so I don't know how they end. There's not even room for a bed. It's probably not a bedroom. I bet it was yeah. a one bedroom plus den, and they just shoved a wall on. And they're saying that the other room doesn't have room for a bed either. Look at the living room here. That's it. And like... this is this is beautiful. There's the kitchen. <laughs> okay, guess the price. Twenty four hundred. Twenty four. Did you cheat? No, it's 500, 500, eh? Well, it's for rent. Is it for rent or sale? Um, these are for, these are for sale. It's pre-construction. Somebody bought. Can you go to one million? No, no. Wellesley downtown. <laughs> Do you know the price? I don't even know if they listed. It. I, I'm just no. pretending. Nine hundred thousand dollars. No, someone made a joke. Start, start, kidding. Starting in the mid eight hundreds. No, it's five hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. yeah. So it makes sense for square footage. But. That's okay. Did, did you see that just room there? That was that was the living room and the kitchen. Nice. That was that was the. So you're gonna have a couch in your kitchen. That was the dining room and the kitchen. Yeah, that's your that's your passage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's 500 square feet, but 120 square feet are hallways. Yeah. Anyways, that's what precon's building right now. So it is what it is. Um. So in no particular order. Um, Ontario awarded Pickering with $5.2 million because they exceeded their 2023 housing target. Go Pickering. They're on target for a ton of more housing, especially condos. So Ontario gave them $5 million to do more. Got to move to Pickering, guys. Mr. Ford gave Pickering <laughs> more money. Has anybody here started to farm those uh, North Pickering, uh, the Mattamy homes and everything? They're, 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 they're about two, three years old now. So if somebody's thinking about farming area, that's an area you want to consider. The yeah. townhomes. There's a whole bunch the of whole mix. There's towns. There's all kinds of stuff. All the Totten Road and yeah. uh, and um, yeah, because those people would have bought area. They would have yeah. bought precon, lived in it for a year, yeah. and maybe now getting ready to do and something. And up and down White's Road. If somebody if somebody's thinking about up and down White's Road, he might want to go into the builders' rooms and find out all the builders and all the different models and have maybe an inventory of when the people go to resell it two years from now, three years from now. You've got the layout. You've got the, the builders' layout of all the different models and all the flooring. You might want to think about this. In the future, right? Mm -hmm. So this headline is about renting. How's how's rentals in Toronto? We talked about it a little bit, but we're seeing it soften a little, even for Who's conference, there? Think, Mo, right? how's downtown rentals? rentals? They're softening, right? Pricing? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's what the my idea say. though for if you guys have buyers that are looking for condos, um, I know we've got an agent that's looking right now in Pickering, and I suggested those new builds. They've got like forty plus um rentals right now. And she was trying to offer on the ones for sale. But if you guys got people that are looking for condos, just ch maybe check out the ones that are up for lease right now and see if you can offer to purchase them. Because I'm sure those are a lot of investors right now. So if you want to get creative with your condo purchases, yep. um, that would be the route I would take if you don't want to compete. Yeah, so we saw a, a decrease in Toronto. So the average asking rent for apartments in Toronto fell 1.3% from this time last year. So we're seeing that in the results. Average rental listing in Canada reached 2193 in February. So that was the fastest growth they've seen since September. And it's still a 21% increase from Feb 2022. So we saw rentals like really skyrocket from 2022 to 2023. And now we're seeing them soften up a little. They're still high though. So it's, it's you know, cost of living is still quite high for Toronto. But people are moving out west. So they're going towards maybe not BC because you're right in it with Toronto, but they're going to Alberta, Edmonton, those types of places. And they're going outside on like uh, the GTA to more of the suburbs area to, to get their cost down. I don't know if you guys saw this. Also, Blog TO empty lot in Toronto is now selling more for when it went had a house on it. So it was a little bungalow. Um, it was advertised as like a you know demolition sort of build a new home. And in 2022, it sold for 950. They demoed the bungalow on it, and I guess they gave up. And they stopped, but they they started building a bit of a foundation, and now it's on sale for 980 thousand. 
but I guess they kind of did some work to demo the house. Like that's, <laughs> that's part of it, no? That's an expense, I guess. The, the gist of the article is that the house is worth, the property is worth more without the house than with the house. That's so that, wild. That's, that, that was the gist of the story. Yeah. Although it hasn't sold though with this either. So <laughs> they're just trying to get their money back, right? Okay, so from likes to leads, this is a little bit of Caitlin's world as well, so you can kind of chime in. So Instagram engagement tips to boost your real estate business in 2024. Um, they talk about crushing your captions. Okay, so I know the captions, like the little comment at the bottom, there's a lot of um, meat to that. So they're saying start with a scroll stopping hook. So have something that kind of hooks that reader into reading more. So something like a what if scenario. So what if you could cut your mortgage in half? Um, strike their curiosity. So this one tip helped my client sell for tens of thousands more, dot, dot, dot. You kind of want them to, to click on the post or go into more of it or going against the grain. I'm done with sold over asking marketing tactic. Here's why. So it's sort of kind of like being a rebel in the industry and doing something a little naughty. Uh, telling a story. So, so not just, you know, posting something, but actually giving some meat to it and telling the story, beginning, middle, end. So actually, you know, solving a problem through that story, having a climax as well and a key takeaway. And then Caitlin and I hone on this on, mm -hmm. on everything, but add a call to action. So add a lead magnet, add something that requires them to message you or get the guide from you or do something. So not just mm -hmm. posting it because it's cute and it looks fun and educational. You have to give them something to act on and hook up. Yeah. Right? Have you guys, is anyone doing the lead magnets that I've told you guys to do? No? Yes. Cool. I will say guys, the call to action and having that lead magnet on your Instagram is literally what's going to get um clients so if you guys are just posting and praying it's not gonna work so you guys really need to i've got some stuff for you guys tomorrow for this but um having some sort of lead magnet like a buyer's guide a seller's guide list of homes under 700 so the best way to link it would be on your bio just to have it there and in your caption you could say link in bio or whatever or you can say cat or comment guide below. And then that increases the engagement of the post to bring it up so other people can see it. And then you just say, no problem. I'm going to DM you. Is that okay? So you're adding another comment and then you DM them and either you get their, I always think getting email addresses is so important unless you're not email marketing, but um, doing these lead magnets is how you guys are going to build that contact list, put it into your database. Now you got them on your drip campaigns or you've got their home address but you're not going to get leads on Instagram if you're not doing this. So if that's the route that you guys are going, then I highly suggest having some sort of lead magnet call to action. Um, otherwise you're just kind of posting and praying and no one's going to call you. Mm -hmm. We talked about this before, but showing the real you. So being authentic, not just showing real estate, but showing kind of what you do for fun in your day-to-day -day life. Documenting obviously with video is good, but if you are kind of shy, it doesn't need to be video. It could be in carousel. So you could have a, a stagnant, like a post that you rotate through. So it could be multiple yeah. posts. It doesn't have to be a video. Or it could be, be a that. video not with you in it, but just like a video of you walking in a house, a video of you showing a neighborhood. You don't necessarily have to be in front of the camera all the time, but showing people with video is really powerful. Yeah. And if you're nervous to do a post or you're just getting into it, stories is the easiest way to like ease into it. It only lasts for 24 hours. It's not a lot of pressure. Stories do get a ton of views, sometimes more views than your grid posts as well. And you can do links on a lot of fun stuff in your stories. So oh yeah, sorry, Aaron, that was the other one. Link in your story. Yeah, so sorry. You can be... add, if you add a sticker on your story. Shit, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so you can have a landing page and go to it. Um either, I don't know, Google Forms or something. But yeah, you have a link, go to your website, whatever it is, get them to go to a landing page, put their first name, last name or something. Stories is where I always say like, share in the feed, sell in the stories. So when I would put a lead magnet up there like every other day, pretty much, not like once. And it's not going to work every time. Um, but definitely it will add your email list if you guys start to do it. Any headlines from you, Claire? Just, just what Carrie just read came out of the real estate uh, magazine, and so you guys can get that information as well. And the author of that I forget who the Andrew author is. Andrew Folly. Oh, not the author, but the, you guys. The author of this particular article. So if you're not in Instagram, you're thinking, well, you guys are talking French or something, yeah. right? Maybe, maybe get somebody like that to help you as well. Right? Yeah, like hiring out. Mm -hmm. The only oh. problem with the hiring out of the companies is I feel like most of these Instagram social media companies don't sell real estate, right? So they know, yeah, you can post every day and they, they can really take real estate agents money because we know that they're going to do the things we don't want to do. But what they don't do is they don't show you, they don't 
advertise who you are. They're not really getting the true Instagram, but they, they make a lot of money off of us that don't want to do these posts. I just think it's a waste of money. Um, if you're not doing it yourself. Anybody here use TikTok? Somewhere. Here, the Americans are really, uh, really anti TikTok right now. They're trying to get them to sell the uh, the North American uh, TikToks. So. Yeah, they want to ban it in the states. Well, they want to sell it, not ban. It. They want to sell it. They want to own it. They, yeah. they want. They don't want the Chinese. They don't want the information to be shared with uh, other parties. Yeah. So they want to sell it to somebody else. Yeah, which is another reason why we've talked about too not keeping your database within your Instagram or your TikTok because. If something like that did happen or exactly. it crashes or it gets hacked, you don't, that all that stuff goes away. Yeah. So you still need to have your database. Exactly. So that's why I tell you guys to get email addresses and mailing addresses, because who knows one day, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, it's going to go, go out. But if you guys have an Excel sheet of a bunch of people's contact information, you own that. Right. So don't rely totally on these apps for your entire business. Things change in this industry. So don't get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Any other headlines that you want to touch on? Headlines? Oh, I guess something else. Okay. You can do that some things. Okay, so somebody came to me the other day there and they had a client that wants to buy a pre-construction in Edmonton. And they and they had an ad and they showed me the ad and and um, the ad says pre-construction Edmonton. The price in this one this project I'm thinking about, it's like two hundred and eighty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. How do you how do you how do you make anything for two hundred and eighty thousand dollars? Here you can't even I don't know. The you can buy a parking lot, parking it's, spot. It's strange, because the labor in Edmonton's got to be the same, in, if not more, than, than Toronto. But the, is the cost of land that much that much cheaper? Mm -hmm. Anyways, the person advertising this project in Edmonton was from Mississauga. Guess guess what? Right? The agent in Mississauga was doing the exact same thing that agents in Toronto do, and they're pretending to be the builder. So this agent created this whole web page on the on this project in Edmonton, two hundred eighty thousand dollars. Contact me, pre-construction. Don't lose out. Blah blah blah. Contact me for details. Client contacts this agent. The agent takes the details. The agent then gets gets hold of everybody at the site. So here's my buyer. Gets himself a commission. and He's finished. Follow me. So that's what that's what guys do here too, right? So there's a new project downtown Toronto, and there's about 10, 10 web pages. Not a single web page is the builder. One, one's the builder. Everybody else is these these other agents pretending to be the builder, and they're taking these leads. Everybody know what I'm talking about. This is nothing new, right? Mm -hmm. So, so if you're trying to maybe got investors out there that maybe want to do that that type of thing, then maybe want to get on that bandwagon too. So all I had to do in this case here is all I had to do is Google the the name of the building. And I found who the builder was. Here's the builder's address. Phone that guy. Get get rid of this guy from Mississauga. Phone the builder. So. If you want thinking about if you got investors that want to get involved in that game, then, then there they are. What, what I don't know, two hundred eight thousand dollars seems super cheap to me. I, I, I'm thinking that rents in Edmonton still have to be comparable to ours. Our, our average rent here for one bedroom is what twenty five hundred. There, it's got to be I don't know, probably eighteen hundred, maybe two thousand. So that that sounds like a pretty good investment. So a lot of people are are investing that way right now. Other thing is, uh, we're getting back into multiple offers and bully offers, and we had one a couple weeks ago. I told you guys about. The, the buyer phoned us up and complained, saying that our agent's not getting back to them because the agent thought that the seller didn't want to sell, so the agent wasn't getting back to them, and the buyer's complaining. He wants to, you know, nobody's phoning them, and the suggestion from Nelson was, look, if you're going to put a, an offer in, do a it. bully offer, what are you talking to me for? Don't ask permission, bully. Put, put, put an offer in, put it in, right? Like, right now you're talking. Right now you don't have an offer, so once you get an offer, get it signed now. So the guy finally got an offer, registered the offer, the agent goes to the to the uh, actually in this case it was it was financial problems that the, the it was going on a power sale. Anyway, she took the offer to the lender and they worked out a deal and then and, and they sold the place. So we had one last week where persons phoning us our agent up saying, "Were your clients taking an offer?" No. <laughs> I put in that voice because <laughs> because because they want to be a bully and they say, "Can I be a bully?" <laughs> right and i'm telling you guys don't you don't ask to be a bully be a bully <laughs> we're going back to the old days if you if you if you have somebody that wants to put an up uh, you guys somebody has an, an offer date on a property that next week and you want to pull a bully offer you don't phone the guy who's like well you take the bully offer you don't forget that you get the offer signed you register the offer now you got a bully off exactly now now it's about a good point the reason why that person may ask will you take a pre a preemptive offer or a bully offer is probably he's probably put Finance conditions and inspection conditions and a low price. It's not, it's, not, it's not really a bully offer. I mean, it has to be a bully offer, firm, high price, bang, bang, bang. But don't be aggressive out there, right? 
That's, that's, that's all I guess. And don't give a conditional bully. <laughs> yeah, it can't be a bully. It can't be a bully, bully conditional <laughs> 10 days on finance. Yeah, just just leave for night if you're going to do that. That's okay. Conditions are fine, but they're on. But if you get rejected and you guys are submitting bully offers with conditions, like don't call a listing agent like an a-hole or anything. Like give them a firm offer, right? Okay, and then tomorrow, right? Yeah, so tomorrow we're not going to talk about social media. I don't think. No, I think Cam is <laughs> not a social media guy. So you get to listen to some other stuff. Well, yeah. normal stuff. Yeah, so all about listings and, and maintaining your database and running a mature business as well. And Caitlin's got some new tools she's going to be giving out. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to miss it. So it's exciting. Get fired up. <laughs> 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 we're gonna need some help up there we'll need some coffee <laughs> just remember everybody it's at cedar bay golf course which is on is it Sewell's? mac frost way it's also stains stains, stains stains and stains and uh totten right it's not scarborough golf club down in scarborough no north not, and if you not scarborough golf club in cedar bay this is cedar bay golf course in melvin yeah. <laughs> if you haven't reserved your seat, can you please tell me? Yeah, there's only five and a half. There's only left? four seats, four and a half seats left. <laughs> I knew I had a, I'd have a few stragglers, but yeah. Okay, good. Any listings you guys want to talk about, or any questions, or anything that you want to get off your chest? Therapy. Anything online? Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll see you all tomorrow then. Nine a.m. Thanks, guys. Have a good week. Bye. You're taking it out. Thanks, Tracy. Bro, I'm going to take